Okay, so we're going to do some sample problems from 11.4. We'll start with number 10. It's asking the limit as x goes to infinity 5 over 2x. Um, so really it's just, a, if you watch the, the previous video, it's just a question of the degree of the numerator versus the degree of the denominator. The degree of the numerator, or the denominator, is clearly bigger since this is it doesn't even have an x, so we don't even think really about the degree of this, even though we could say it was degree zero. It would be a little bit silly. So this is the only number that's going to get any bigger, and it's going to get so much bigger than five that it's like like five wasn't even there almost when x gets really 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 big. So we will get to so close to zero that we say the limit is zero. The limit at infinity of 5 over 2x is zero. Um, number 14. The limit as x approaches, I'm going to address a question you may have had in the previous video, maybe you didn't, but here it comes. x plus um, for one, you might get into the tendency of just looking at the numbers that are farthest to the left and comparing them. Careful not to do that. You want to look at the degree, which means you need to find the largest power of x, which here we have a power of x that is 1, power of x here that's 1. So we need to compare these two guys. If, if we needed to, we could just reorder it. We don't have to. Don't feel like you have to but it might make it easier to look at. There. Now we have the, the highest powers of x right over each other. And they're the same. They're equal. They're going to keep each other in check, you know, kind of in a way. I think of these as like these battles between uh, x, the highest powers of x. So this one's going to go up to 1,000, and so is this one. They're going to be exactly the same. And as we get up to a million and a trillion and, and quadrillion and a Googleplex, these definitely do not have much influence. Uh, almost none as x gets very large. So um, it's as if we had negative 3x over x. And this is going to go to a Googleplex, and this is going to go to a Googleplex, and this is going to go to a Google Googleplex. I don't even know if that's the right way to talk about that. But so is this. And they're both going to be keeping up with each other, canceling each other out essentially, and just leaving negative 3 over 1. It's, it's going to be this ratio of negative 3 to 1. Negative 3 to 1. Whatever x is, this will get multiplied by negative 3, and this will get multiplied by 1. It'll be a ratio of negative 3 to 1. Okay. The question you may have had here is that, hey, this is going to negative infinity. Doesn't that change things? Because um, when I put a, a negative Google in here, and a negative, let's use a, a number that you're familiar with, a negative million. When I put negative a million in here, well, that's not negative 3, that's positive 3. So doesn't it change to positive 3? Well, keep in mind that you're not only you're putting negative a million there, you're also putting negative a million in here. So where you have negative a million times negative 3 is positive 3 million. Now this was, it used to be a positive a million. Now it's a negative a million. Um, so positive 3 million over negative a million would still be negative 3 over 1, or negative 3. So essentially, no. Whether whether we put in a positive big number for x or a negative big number for x, they still cancel each other out. Exactly. They still make themselves into one. Okay. So that is hopefully a satisfactory answer to that question. Um, and we'll do 18. The limit as x goes to infinity. Of four, oh, sorry, this, should, this is supposed to be y of y, four y to the fourth over y squared plus three. So now we're remembering in the previous video we talked about how it's just about the degrees of the numerator and denominator. This degree is degree four. This is degree two. Those are the highest powers. Y to the fourth is going to get way bigger than y squared, which means that this is going to just go off to infinity. Okay. Now, only for these kinds where the limit doesn't exist will it matter if it's positive or negative infinity here. Um, but really, it doesn't. It, it, it 
could go, I'll give you two different scenarios here. When we put in a big infinity here, a big positive infinity, we get this big positive number times 4, and we, we square a positive number, we get this, this positive. So um, this would go to positive infinity. Um, and now I'm realizing even if it went to negative infinity, it, it wouldn't make any difference. Um, let's, let's just make one up really quickly. So x goes to infinity of x to the third over x squared. Really simple function. Um, well, if it goes to positive infinity, then I get a positive number over a positive number. This would go to positive infinity. It would, quote, equal a positive infinity. But what about the limit as x goes the other way to negative infinity? Well, a negative number to the third power, or to any odd power, is again going to be negative. But then you put that negative power down here into this even power, it's going to be positive. So you have a negative over a positive. So this would go to negative infinity. Okay, so it does make a slight difference. Either way, though, we still say the limit does not exist because it doesn't approach one value. Whether it goes to positive infinity or negative infinity really doesn't matter in terms of does the limit exist because it doesn't. It just doesn't. Okay. Now let's look at uh, uh, another kind of problem here. Um, like for number 40, just picking it kind of randomly. There's this sequence defined by n over n squared plus 1. n over n squared plus 1. So it says write the first four terms, right? That means that we want to write the first, second, third, fourth term. This would be <coughs> first, second, third, fourth n would be 1, n would be 2, n would be 3, n would be 4. That's a review of sequences, or, or you need a review of sequences if you don't remember that. Um, so we put 1 in there, 1 over 1 squared plus 1, that would be 1 half. And then we put 2 in there, 2 over 2 squared plus 1, that's 2 over 4 plus 1, that's 2 over 5. Now we do 3, that'll be 3 over 10. Now we do 4, that'll be 4 over 17 and so on. So as we, if we kept going, what's the limit of this sequence? The, what's the, what will these terms, these numbers, get closer and closer and closer to? It's really no different a question than it was before. This n is squared, this n is not. This n will get much bigger, or this thing will get much bigger because it's n squared. Uh, it'll get much bigger than just n to the first. So what will be the limit of this sequence, the limit of the sequence, limit of a sub n is 0. The limit of a sub n is 0. It's limited by 0. It can't get any smaller than 0. It, it'll never actually approach or, or get exactly to 0. And that's just, you know, that's its destiny. The destiny of this sequence is just to get really close to 0. So it's really the same kind of a question. So if we were to do 42 and say, what's the limit of this sequence for n minus 1 over n plus 3? Let's write the first four terms, just like we're supposed to. First, second, third, fourth term. Put a 1 in there. We have 4 minus 1, so that's going to make 3 up here. Uh, 1 plus 3, that's 4. Uh, we've got uh, 4 times 2, that's 8 minus 1, so that's 7 over 5. Okay, and then we're going to have 12 minus 1, that's 11 over 6. Uh, we've got 16 minus 1, that's 15 over 7. Okay, And at these small values of n, we're not really seeing it, but let's go to n is 100 go through all of these and come in around here at 100. n is 100. So we have 400 minus 1. That's 399. Over 100 plus 3, that's just 103. So that's so close to 400 over 100, which is just, you know, it's close to 4. And if we kept going and we went to uh, 1,000, we'd have 4,000 minus 1, that'd be 3,999 over 1,000 plus 3. 
That's a thousand and three. That's even closer than this is to to four. Four thousand, almost four thousand. Just one away from four thousand, three away from a thousand. So it's really close to four. So the limit of a sub n, a sub n, is four. And so we see that because if we think of these as degrees, this is degree one, this is degree one. So we have the ratio of the leading coefficients. Okay, no big deal, and not a big surprise. All right. Hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.